Things are heating up, and I don't just mean that spiritually. If you haven't yet heard, a second chance to view the magnificent auroras produced by a series of solar flares and coronal mass ejections from the sun will arrive Saturday evening in case you missed the previous night's spectacle. And how interesting it is that roughly 30 days after our April 8th solar eclipse, we are now having another round of signs in the sky. And most of you will discount this video. You'll say that it's just solar flares, Gabe. Stop making things out of it. And I, I hear that out and I'll present that perspective certainly here on this video, but I'm also gonna present a perspective that there might just be some meaning behind the signs in the sky. And it'll be up to you. You could decide however you wish to interpret what is going on around us. And no matter what, if you haven't yet heard, auroras might be seen as far south as Alabama later Saturday, according uh, to the, well, it's a long science name. I'm, I'm not gonna go into, I'm not gonna pronounce. The best viewing will be across the Ohio River Valley through the Midwest and into the Pacific Northwest. So you saw the title of this video, what biblical prophecies could these lights be fulfilling? Well, I'm gonna take you through some scriptures first, and then we're gonna talk about it. So in Ezekiel chapter one, and before I get into this, you don't have to even be a Christian in today's world to understand the reality of the spiritual realm. In fact, even atheists are coming around to facing the reality that there are more dimensions than what we are just aware of. Just like you only learned about two dimensions in first grade, and then you learned about the third dimension, and then you know the fourth dimension, then you know the fifth dimension. Even now, scientists are talking about the seventh dimension and even the eleventh dimension, which is interesting because the Bible has spelled it all out from the beginning. But that being said, let's keep going. In Ezekiel chapter one, I want you to look at verse three. The Lord God gave this message to Ezekiel, son of Buzi, a priest. I'm not pronouncing any of these correctly. Just forgive me. <laughs> Beside the Kabar River in the land of the Babylonians, he felt the hand of the Lord take hold of him. Verse four, as I looked, I saw a great storm coming from the north, driving before it a huge cloud that flashed with lightning and shone with brilliant light. So we're talking about these northern lights, which is awfully interesting. There was fire inside the cloud, and then the middle of the fire glowed something like gleaming amber, like burnished metal. From the center of the cloud came four living beings that looked human, except that they each had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, their feet had hooves like those of a calf, and shone like burnished bronze. So we can obviously tell, and then he goes on in verse 10, each had a human face in the front, the face of a lion on the right side, the face of an ox on the left, and the face of an eagle on the back. So he saw some very interesting things that I'm not exactly sure that these northern lights are exactly conveying. And let's look at another scripture before we talk about this, because again, we got to look at the entire context. When people talk about the Bible, a lot of times they'll just pull one verse out as if it's like lucky charms, and then they'll form an entire foundation of belief off of one verse. When the Bible is similar to how I text my wife, Allie, if all she ever saw of me was one text, <laughs> she wouldn't really know me. She would know a part of me, but you have to see the full context. Um, you have to really get to know someone, and that's how we get to know God, is by seeing full context. But I want you to look at Isaiah chapter um, 31, and we're going to be starting in, to look at verse uh, 26. This is where it gets really interesting, though. The moon will be as bright as the sun, and the sun will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven days in one. So it will be when... I really want to talk about how interesting it is that the Bible spelled out how there would be a time that we would witness where the sun and the moon will be as bright as the sun and the sun will be seven times brighter, how there'll be a shifting in the flares. For a while, scientists have always thought about the sun as if it's the type of star to always have the same amount of light coming through. And sure, there were some small variations, but it was, it was really constant. But recently, there have been so many flares and change-ups that almost the, the type and structure of the star that we name the sun has almost really changed in the way in which we even view it, but the Bible spelled it out for us from the start. So what could all of this mean that all of these solar flares are coming upon America? I believe part of this that, that I'm convinced, and, and of course it doesn't even take a, a, a solar flare to have this conclusion, but it certainly is a reminder, okay? So we're not getting spooky here, we're not getting just a, just trying to entertain. I'm not just saying theories to get an audience. I'm telling you what I, I believe is the heart of God concerning America, and that is this. His eye is ever upon the choices we are making. His eye is ever upon the country that his heart has been for, because America has never called to just be America on our own and just be for ourselves. We have been called to be a light to the nations. But if we're being honest with ourselves, we're so caught up right now in fighting for the right 
to murder more, more children through abortion. We're fighting for the right to gain access to things and into, into realms that we have no right to be in. It's so interesting. We fight for the rights that really just take away the rights of others. How convenient, right? Uh, we are, we're pushing propaganda where little kids don't even know their identity anymore. We, we say they're free, but really they're in bondage because they don't even know who, what gender they are. They don't even know what one plus one is anymore. Like where is the real love? And of course we've repackaged the word love into whatever the alphabet mafia says, because of course, if you love Jesus, you need to be separated from everything. But if you're part of the alphabet mafia, then you could just be in everything. With all that being said, what's so interesting is the increased solar activity created stunning shows of dancing green, purple, and red lights in night skies. You know, I've had times even in my life where when the Lord was speaking, um, there, there were certainly signs in the sky. And that doesn't always mean that every single thing that happens in the sky is God speaking. But I really do believe that these are clear signals of anticipating warnings that we need to set right the ship, that we need to remember who our center is, who the sun is, and not just the physical sun, who the sun is. I'm so tired of everyone knowing about him, knowing about the rules of him, knowing about a religion of him, when actually religion was his greatest enemy. Actually, he gave his entire life to dismantle religion because he just wants to know you personally. And finally, before we talk about anything else, I just need to make a call but to both men and women, but especially men watching this video right now, please take the stand and obey the call of God on your life because for so long you have been waiting on God. But what if I actually told you that God's waiting on you right now to take responsibility for your actions, to humble yourself and get on your knees and give him your everything. Finally say yes and submit to his plan that he's already written out for your life. It may seem costly. It may seem inconvenient. But trust me, there's nothing better that you could do than surrender everything to God, especially in these end times that we are living in. Boys, stop being boys. Grow up and become a man. I don't care how old you are. Get a job, pay your bills, provide, period. I don't even know why I'm even having to say this on a YouTube video. <laughs> when I think about what's going on in this world right now, we can look at Israel and the hundreds of hostages that are being held. There are little six-month-year-old babies who are still being held captive and their own mother has been taken hostage. And who knows what of the things that they have been doing to her time and time again, day after day. And if you're like me and you actually want to help support these innocent kids and families, you can actually donate right now. My friends at Israel365 are on the ground, boots on the ground, ministering and um, serving these families and supporting them financially and helping find ways to reach them and get to them and take a stand and speaking up. And there's just a million things that they're doing in Israel right now to help the innocent. And if you would like to donate to those families, those innocent hostages, you can click the link down in the description below. 100% of your donations go to Israel365 and you can know that you are making a difference in their life. In these end times, they're nothing that we need to be afraid of, but instead we should just get caught up with him in close, intimate, personal relationship with him and staying under the Lord's umbrella. Because let me tell you, when you're under the Lord's umbrella, you're not afraid of anything. And you're constantly on fire for him. You're constantly pushing yourself. And every time the enemy hits you, you push back seven times harder because you know who you are in Christ. And that is the identity that he paid for. That is the reason he took the nails in his hands and a spear in his side, because he believed in you, because he's on your side.